Thanks for checking out this episode of Kentucky Running, brought to you by John's Run Walk Shop in Lexington. I'm your host, Matt Reno, and today we're talking to the marketing director of Recover Brands, Adam Bratton. Now, if you've run one of our races this year, maybe Reforce 5K, Distillery Dash, Rattler Rush, Cabernet Canter, you may have noticed the shirts look a little different. If you look closely at them, they've got these cool, almost multicolored fibers. If you look really closely, long and short of it is, it's made from recycled materials. He'll get into more details about that and a lot more about what Recover Brands does. But before we do that, I've got our general manager, Riley Marshall here. Riley, how are you doing today? Good, Matt. Thanks for having me. Tell us how we as John's Run Workshop discovered Recover Brands and why we thought it would be a good fit for our race shirts. Yeah, so we have been Green Check certified for several years now. We just recertified with them back in the spring. We are always on the lookout for ways we can be greener as a company. And one of the things that we believe is if we're going to go greener, we need to make sure that that's a concrete step we can take without sacrificing quality or anything like that. And Recover Brands makes excellent quality shirts. So we saw them back at a conference last year and immediately knew, you know, we want to see if we can make this work for our races moving forward, some of our in-store apparel as well. All of those factors have come together really, really nicely. They obviously have a great quality, but on top of that, they are actually more cost effective for us. So we can continue working with them moving forward. They're going to hopefully be our partner for years and years to come and allow us to make a concrete step towards being greener for good. Yeah, and as we're going to get into in the interview with Adam, Recover works with some pretty large organizations, such as Farm Aid. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but they're also big on supporting small businesses. So what made them a good choice for us as a local small business? One of the things that's really fun about running a small business is you really get to highlight and see the world in a way that shows off how you can make a difference in your small corner of the world. So hearing Recover's story really jived with how our story has happened. They are hyper local. Most of their shirts don't travel far. So on top of being greener, their carbon footprint's very low. And the amount of lead time we have with them makes it easy to order from them. Everything is very straightforward with them from the get-go. From start to finish, you know, we don't have hiccups, anything like that. And as a small business, we really can't take hiccups or complex ordering in a way that a larger company might be able to handle that. So that is a number number one factor, too, and why we have had great success with Recover so far. Great. And we're going to learn all about Recover in just a minute. But what is the next race that we have on our calendar where participants can get shirts from Recover brands? Yeah, it's one of our favorite races every year. It is the West 6th Farm Trail 10K. Um, that is, as the name implies, out at the West 6th Farm in Frankfurt. We normally cap that race. So if you haven't signed up and want to get your hands on one of these awesome shirts, do make sure to sign up soon so that we can guarantee your shirt size. And it is happening Saturday, November 2nd. All right. Thanks, Riley. No problem, Matt. Before we get to our main interview, I want to take a quick break to tell you about a new sponsor for Kentucky Running, Curex Insoles. You may have seen them in our store already. We're really excited to have brought this brand to John's Run Walk Shop. Whether you're looking for more cushion or arch support while you're running or just going through your day-to-day activities, Curex Run Pro Insoles could be the solution you need. Here are some of the benefits they offer. Flexible support and shock absorbing cushioning from heel to toe to help reduce fatigue, prevent common running injuries, and boost performance. Dynamic arch support with a deep decoupled heel cup fits, wraps, and locks the heel in place to improve stability, reduce pressure, and provide a perfect fit. Rebound cushioning and controlled power transmission provide faster regeneration and powerful propulsion with every stride. Performance insoles feature a zero heel drop, providing the best fit in most running shoes with optimized motion for all running foot strikes. And they help manage moisture with mesh top layer and premium foam cushioning to keep feet dry and running shoes fresh. Next time you're in John's Run Walk Shop, ask us to check out your arches and knee alignment so we can help you find the right pair of Curex Run Pro insoles for you. All right, today we're talking to Adam Bratton, Marketing Director for Recover Brands. Adam, thanks for being on the show. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to dig into it today. Great. So tell us a little bit about the background of Recover Brands. How long have they been around? 
how did the company get started? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Recover's been around since 2010. Been kind of on a mission to create truly sustainable apparel, constant kind of innovation. The recycled textiles and apparel industry has changed quite a bit over those years. But ironically, the concept was created out of our founders, Bill Johnson and, and John Riddle linked up because I think Bill was a recent college grad and was trying to buy a bike. And so they met up to exchange that and kind of go on a couple rides just to kind of see if the bike was working, all that stuff. And the business model literally stemmed from conversations as they were riding bikes through the, the mountains of Western North Carolina. So it's uh, at the ethos, Recover's always been about active, getting out in nature. And so it's been a fun ride ever since. But yeah, started in 2010. And so we're, we're actually about to enter our 15th year. So it'll be, uh, we've got some exciting plans to celebrate the 15 year anniversary next year in, in 2025. Awesome. Well, congrats on that milestone. And how long have you been with the company? Yeah, so I, I have a history with the company as well. So not since 2010, but I was originally introduced to Recover back in 2012. I was working at a place here in Charlotte, North Carolina called the Whitewater Center. Had developed an entire race series at that facility, trail races, kayak races, climbing events, all that stuff. And you know, obviously, same thing. We're very environmentally focused. And so the logical option for all of our participant shirts was was Recover. And that kind of evolved into festival merchandise, retail merchandise, and that relationship really kind of built from there. And, you know, that was in 2012. Uh, initially started buying the product back then. Uh, and as of more recent, in the last couple of years, I've started working for Recover. So now uh, I always joke with Bill, the founder, I said, you know, I, I was buying product for over a decade and now now I'm marketing and selling the product as well. So it's it's a long history of, with my experience with Recover. And it's been really cool to kind of see the progression, the evolution, kind of the advancements uh, that have happened over that 12 years have kind of been around the recovery. Nice, brand. nice. Good when you already know what the company's all about before you start working there. Like I had been a customer of John's Run Walk Shop for years before I started working yeah. there. So yeah, smooth transition. <laughs> right. You know, obviously every situation is unique, but I just, I think that's very powerful. That's really helpful because you just kind of get a different personal or an authentic perspective and a, and a relationship with a brand from the consumer side. And you really kind of learn and understand. And so that's that's a cool perspective to then bring, you know, kind of, quote unquote, in-house. You know, I feel like I've got a, a well-rounded perspective of, hey, not only from the consumer side, how can we best service our, our customers, but also now on the inside of, cool, now I'm understanding way more about the operations, the logistics, the whole process, the science and, and uh, you know, everything about the, the apparel industry as a whole. So it's fun to be able to see it from both sides of the table, I guess. Yeah. And let's talk a little bit about that, the science and everything behind it. How does Recover make more sustainable apparel and what sets them apart from other clothing brands? Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, this is this is probably we could probably go for hours. So I don't <laughs> I don't want to bore the listener here. So I'll try and distill it. It's really interesting because, you know, especially now and it's, it was different back in 2010 and in kind of the early days. But especially now, I mean, we all know it. We see glimpses of sustainability initiatives and aspects and, and pillars within all kinds of different industries now, and which is a great thing, right? Like that's our mindset is we love that. The more mass aware that people can be, the more understanding that there are sustainable options out there, the better. What we've focused on from day one is being a truly sustainable apparel company. So there's, again, I don't want to go into a ton of detail, but there's all kinds of different levels of sustainability. So legally, you can say that you're use, you know, you're creating a uh, recycled T-shirt if you use 5% of the material is recycled material. There's different levels of recycled material, and that's a global recycling standard uh, blended kind of level, right? Minimum of 5%. You know, Recover, we have the global recycling standard certification at 100 percent. And that means you have to have 95 percent or more of that material is recycled content. So everything that we've done is we've really tried to go above and beyond to try and be pioneers in the space. Not only do we use 100 percent recycled material in our products, but we also manufacture those products in hyper local supply chains. That's a term we've kind of trademarked to define our supply chain. So, for example, the average T-shirt travels 17,000 miles from raw material to a finished product. So we have two different hyper-local supply chains. One is domestically here in the U.S. Southeast, and one is in El Salvador. Our supply chain in the U.S. Southeast is all done within a 250-mile radius of our headquarters here in North Carolina. 
So think about that 17,000 miles versus everything done in 250 mile radius. Taking that a step further, our, our Central American supply chain, everything is done within a 10 mile radius. So that means a recycled water bottle is then turned into an entirely new garment all within a 10 mile radius. So now we're talking about not only is it 100% recycled material, but now we're talking about reducing CO2 emissions, you know, 10 miles versus 17,000 miles. Anybody who's listening can kind of see that, wow, that's, that's impactful. And then it's taking a step further, we've also introduced this 360 degree closed loop program where just like you'd recycle a water bottle or a milk jug or a soda can, we also take shirts back and turn those back into more shirts. So we basically break the fibers down, reuse all those fibers back into our supply chain. So every step along the way, there is very, very intentional and well thought out steps to make it not only can we say it's a sustainable shirt, but it is truly a sustainable shirt from design, manufacture, use. And then at the end of its life, we've got a fully circular program where we can take that shirt back, keep it out of the landfill, literally for eternity. Some people say, hey, we have 5% recycled material in our shirt. Love that. We need more of that. But we are light years ahead of that in the entirety and the holistic view that we take. So, you know, some of our products are 100% recycled plastic. Uh, some of our, our items are a blend. The item that I'm wearing now is part of our eco line. Uh, this happens to be the polo shirt. We've got short sleeve, long sleeve polos, fleece, and that's a blended. So it's kind of a 60-40 blend of upcycled cotton scraps as well as that recycled plastic. One item that is not recycled is our USDA organic cotton line. So that's a, a nice addition to the collection that's not recycled, but it's that USDA certified organic cotton. And that's a, that's one of our USA made products that we're really, really excited about. So it's still part of the hyper local loop, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That's all, it's all US made. The, the cotton is, uh, it's actually Texas cotton, but then it's knit, sewn, cut, finished, everything like that, all within that supply chain. Um, in the U.S. Southeast. Farm Aid is a big customer of ours and they do the big concerts every year. And it's obviously they use that organic shirt because it's just a really nice storytelling opportunity for Farm Aid as a as an organization to say, hey, not only are we these concerts are supporting, you know, local farms, but also we are then going to turn around and sell merch that is sourced, made and all that stuff responsibly, sustainably. And uh, really just kind of helps tell their story a little bit more. That's great. And as consumers, we don't really think about all the things that go into our clothing or other products. We say, oh, cool. It's you know partially recycled or whatever. That's that's great. I'm doing my part. But then there's the driving the trucks and the boats and the planes and, and everything that's contributing to uh, negative effects in the environment. So that hyper local loop is really important, but it can't be easy. What were some of the logistical hurdles that Recover had in the beginning? Yeah, absolutely. And you're exactly right. And that is that is one of the challenges. And again, we've been at this since 2010. So we feel like we've really, you know, been pretty steadfast on making sure, hey, if we're going to create new products or we're going to set that up, we need to do it in the right way. And so, yeah, that creates some other logistical challenges on our end. You know, but I think one thing was really and, you know, we all know about the COVID thing, what happened from the global supply chains and all that kind of stuff. We take the nearshore approach. And, and obviously that in many respects can kind of be a positive when the globe shuts down. Well, guess what? We're still able to, you know, we don't have to rely on shipping things around the world in our supply chain. There's a practical business sense for it as well. We can control our supply chain because it is smaller. We are closer to it. We do have more hands-on experience with it. So in a lot of respects, not only is there, you know, some challenges that come with that, but also there's some there's a lot of pros that come with that, too. So, you know, our ability to deliver products on a timely basis, it's a lot faster to sh ship a product, you know, 500 miles or a thousand miles than it is 17,000. So some challenges, of course, but also big upsides to it as well. You know, from a supply chain standpoint, COVID disrupted a little bit of our supply chain, especially domestically. You know, we had a lot of the U.S. manufacturing is, is obviously very different than international manufacturing. And so, you know, we had a really cool product that we're really we're trying to retool it now. It was called the local layer. And that was a product that we had. It was all done within a 150 mile radius of our headquarters in North Carolina. It was kind of like a kind of like a soft shell, kind of like the Patagonia R1 really great piece. And, you know, after COVID, some of the factories, you know, suppliers that we were using, um, unfortunately shut down. And so we had some troubles with that. So there are some challenges with it. 
we're working on retooling that a little bit and actually adding some new products as well. So that's kind of the evolution that we've seen over the years is, you know, there's there's obviously ebbs and flows, but the North Star, if you will, has always been, hey, let's let's make sure if we're going to do it, do it the right way. Take the holistic approach. Anybody could get anything manufactured anywhere. Right. Just generally speaking. And if that's your ethos, then, you know, go for it. Our ethos is intentionality responsibly producing items and sustainably producing items. So a little more work uh, on our end, but we feel that that's the better way to do things. The The approach we've taken is saying, hey, just because we can do it doesn't mean do it. Do it the right way. Do it the better way. Do it the more responsible way. Nice. And I should mention the products are still high quality. Yeah. <laughs> Listeners might be thinking, wait, these shirts are made out of plastic. That can't be comfortable. But yeah, they are very soft, very comfortable. You figured out how to get the, the best of both worlds there. Yeah. And, and in the early days, I mean, recycled textiles have really kind of been in the marketplace for, you know, for decades. Um, initially, they were used in, you know, very often you'd see it in carpets, insulation, stuff of that nature. And so early in the 2010, when Recover started, you know, there was a little bit of that, you know, there's a little bit of the education that needed to occur to the consumer of saying, hey, no, no, these these items can be quality consumer facing items, not just filler items, you know? And so, Mm -hmm. you know, it is kind of interesting. We still have a conversation now where someone's like, wait, is that, that shirt's made out of a plastic water bottle? Like what in the world? But that's where, again, a lot of people are starting to implement some of these more sustainable fabrics or uh, materials into their products. So it is becoming a little bit more mainstream. We've always known that they can still be a really high quality, durable material. But obviously, from the general mass consumer marketplace, you know, a lot of people are really kind of understanding that a bit more. You see repurposed materials in all sorts of applications, whether that be textiles or, you know, other items, too. So. You know, there's sunglass companies that are made from, you know, ocean plastic. So these materials can be repurposed in a number of different ways. You know, obviously, we feel like we've got the the special sauce in the uh, in the apparel space. But uh, we love, you know, we do a lot of collaborations with other brands that are doing supportive work in their industries or their product segments as well. So the more we can keep doing that and share that with the public and and that people understand that like, okay, yeah, I can repurpose or I want to support brands that are repurposing materials instead of introducing new quote unquote fast fashion materials, then that's going to, that's what's going to take long-term, you know, adoption and long-term change in our opinion. So we love when we see other, other companies that are using recycled materials and other applications as well. You mentioned that you've been providing clothes for Farm Aid. Mm -hmm. Any other partnerships or collaborations you want to highlight? We do a lot of work in a lot of different fields. It's funny that Bill, the founder, again, he kind of goes back to the original kind of industries that we were selling into were, you know, things that were of personal interest. And so outdoor recreation type type of things, uh, beer, you know, a lot of breweries and music, right? So festivals, concerts, stuff like that. You know, and we see it now too, a lot of organizations and and especially in the corporate world are saying, hey, look, we need to have an ESG initiative or some sort of reporting or something like this. And so there is a need to be more environmentally, sustainably focused. And so, you know, we do a lot of work in the corporate space. A good example is Rivian, electronic vehicles. Clearly their their ethos is they're trying to remove petroleum-based vehicles from the road. And so we do a ton of work with those guys for obvious reasons. Going back to the beer thing, Sierra Nevada, they're a pretty environmentally and sustainably minded company. And so we do a lot of work um, with them as well. Obviously, both tap rooms here in Mills River, North Carolina, as well as their um, Chico uh, tap room out in uh, out in California. You know, but it's also we work with a lot of, like I said, the local coffee shops, the breweries, mm-hmm. the mom and pop shops, yeah. outdoor, you know, kind of outdoor specialty retailers. Clearly, we'll, we'll get into the, the run industry, which is a huge vertical for us. But yeah, there's a like I said, there's a lot of different applications for it. Our brand tagline is the responsible company for everyone. And that's very intentional, right? It's we want this sustainable mindset to be mass adopted and mass appealing. And so, you know, that opens it up to, hey, if you care about having a more sustainable apparel option, then we're a great option for you. You know, whether that's, you know, getting blanks, we can do full decoration or just send blanks, you know, whatever it is. If you if you truly care about saying, hey, I want to I want to use that blank canvas as my storytelling opportunity for sustainability, we can then turn around and provide 
impact stats, impact reporting to show how many bottles were diverted from the landfill, you know, how much CO2 we avoided since we didn't have to ship 17,000 miles. All the colors from the material is actually all natural. So it comes from the recycled cotton scraps. So that means we don't use any dyes. We don't use any chemicals, anything like that. So that saves 99% the amount of water and electricity of a conventional shirt. So there's a lot of different things. We kind of tell that story within our impact reporting. But that's another thing we said before is like a lot of people don't think about what goes into the shirt they throw, they pull out of their drawer every day. We've done all that work and said, hey, yeah, like, cool. Let's use 99% less water, energy. Let's massively reduce the CO2 emissions associated with the supply chain. Let's divert more water bottles from the <laughs> landfill instead of introducing more water bottles. So clearly I'm geeking out on it a little bit, but... We feel that if people are interested in that type of storytelling opportunity, then it's open to any industry, right? The industry is kind of agnostic. It doesn't really matter if you care about responsible apparel, then, hey, we're, we're here to service you. Yeah. And we really appreciate that, even though you work with larger brands like Farm Aid and Rivian, that you're also working with, you know, we're a small local running store, local race company. But you're working with us, providing shirts for our races. It's been great. Let's talk about some of your other success stories in the run industry. Yeah, yeah. Well, sure. And and that's honestly, again, that's where it kind of comes from. And that's where I get excited, too, because like we said before is, you know, that's how I was first introduced to Recover back in 2012. It was, you know, I was a race director at that point. And it's, you know, everyone in the running industry, we know that like, yeah, you sign up for the race, you get your race shirt. Like that's just synonymous, right? We love the opportunity of saying one of our taglines is, you know, bringing sustainability to the start line and beyond, right? And that's the idea. It's like, we all probably have a full drawer of race shirts and medals and bibs and all that stuff in the back of the closet. And those are great. The, those items are so, you know, we're so emotionally attached to the experience and all that stuff. And so we think that's a great avenue to, to tell that sustainable story. And then again, you know, for folks like you, it's like, yeah, cool. We've got this, you know, we've got the ability to take back shirts, whether that be dead stock after the race or at the store, but also, hey, you know, when you're coming out to the race, like bring your old shirts, we'll recycle them. We'll turn them back into new shirts. Maybe, maybe your old shirt shows back up as a portion of the next shirt after the next race. You know, there's just so many cool storytelling opportunities there. And that's the case, whether we're talking about all the good stuff you guys are doing at John's or whether it's a couple of our bigger uh, events or, you know, the Marine Corps Marathon or the Big Sur Marathon, right? We've partnered up with a lot of those big time events. And so, but the concept is the same. Hey, how can we continue to introduce that sustainable approach into what we're doing, whether it's a cup free ultra running trail race that has, you know, 50 people or whether it's a 25,000 person marathon in the urban sprawl, the concept's the same. And so we like the ability to be able to support and bring that storytelling opportunity to races big and small and shops big and small. And so that's what we don't really care if it's a if it's a small shop in the middle of nowhere. We we love those guys just as much as the big shops in the big city. Right. It's uh, the, the, the concept. Again, we want it to be universally appealing. And so yeah, that's thanks. kind of our approach as well. And so that's why, you know, we love what you guys are doing and in, in your neck of the woods in Kentucky and rocking and rolling in Lexington and around. So uh, we, we definitely appreciate, you know you investing in a more sustainable approach and being cognizant of it and understanding that, hey, we are going to have an impact with our races. Like there is going to be an environmental impact. We all know that. But let's be smart about it. Let's be cognizant of it. Let's just be, you know, smarter consumers of it. And you guys are, you know, perfect example. We're saying, yeah, kudos to you guys for understanding that, acknowledge that and doing your part because it does, it does, you know, it takes everybody. Yeah, it adds up. It's a small race, big race. It all makes a difference. A hundred percent. How does Recover measure its environmental impact? You've been talking about some of the numbers, but how do you keep track of all that? Yeah. So, and good question. So we've, we've spent a significant amount of time and, and dollars and energy into all of our products are third party certified. So again, that goes back to a lot of people are just throwing the sustainability sticker on their website without really any validation, right? They, you know, again, they use minimal, you know, levels that are allowed and they kind of just 
slap the sticker on there for the greenwashing. We actually we actually just dropped a um, a new blog post about it's called Greenwashing 101 to really just take that head on and say, guys, look, let's just be aware of what is happening out there. Let's acknowledge it. Let's understand it. So we spent a ton of time in all of our third party certifications. All of it's done through BCom, which is a Spanish company. And what we found is we're again light years ahead of a, a comparable shirt. They take everything into account, not only the materials used, but even things like traceability. So on average, and each product is different, right? So we basically, they did research on every single one of our products, our eco line, our classic line, our organic line, our sport elite, our impact jacket, all these things. And so they have different reports for each and every one, but they even go back to like the traceability. And so we're super proud that we've been able to certify, I think the lowest traceability is maybe like 92% traceability in all of our products. Comparatively, a, you know, fast fashion shirt that's out there would be thrilled if they could get anywhere close to 30% traceability. So just, just as a, as an example for the listener, like, and that's why I keep saying we're light years ahead of, you know, that fast fashion shirt you're grabbing off the shelf. And we just think that's so important, right? A lot of people are just throwing stuff out there without that validation. Everything we have is third party certified. And again, Of course, that takes a lot more time for us. That costs us a lot more money to have all that stuff done. There's a lot of resources we've put towards that. But what I said earlier is we think that that's the right way to do things. If we're going to be pioneers in the uh, sustainable apparel space, we need to back that up. And that can't just be us. We can't just say, hey, trust us, right? Hey, trust us that this product is responsible. It's like, well, no, we need to back that up. We need to certify that. We need to verify that with third parties. And we've done all that stuff. So, you know, all the impact stats that we have that are coming out, that's come from BCom. And they're a, you know, they're a global leader in that sustainable reporting space. And so that's why we've chosen to go through that process with them is that allows us to further tell our story. And then also all of our customers, then they can tell that story as well, right? We've done all the back leg work, the homework, all that stuff. So we could literally run a report for jobs and say, hey guys, look, here's the impact we've had. And we can create these graphics and all kinds of stuff. So maybe we can uh, we can get a graphic worked up and get that over to you. So we can see literally the listeners of, of the podcast can check it out and say, oh, wow, here's the impact that John's is having. Yeah. OK, let's do it. Yeah, perfect. Well, that's my promise to you, Matt. And that's my promise to the listeners that we'll get an impact stat graphic over there. And that's what we love. That's a whole reason why we're saying, cool, we want to help customers tell that sustainability story. Like that's an important thing when you can see how many gallons of water you've saved or how many water bottles, whatever it is, that's really impactful. I'll definitely be reading the blog post about greenwashing because that's that's important now because everybody's saying they're sustainable and they all have a little green leaf uh, somewhere in their packaging but you can't believe it all so and that's that's what we go into we talk about that it's like you know some labels are the color green and they're trying to tap into they, it may not have nothing to do with natural or anything like that but that's all part of this greenwashing you know philosophy And I think from our stance is we say, hey, look, we just want you to be conscious consumers, right? Understand, be informed, right? Educate yourselves. And it takes work. We know that. But we want to kind of help you along that way. So we also dropped another um, blog post. It's fast fashion versus slow fashion. So I kind of referenced that before. But, you know, (laughs) we see we see some companies that are doing micro releases every week. They're doing 52 different micro collections. And it's like, well, clearly that is not sustainable, right? That's just not that is just the absolute end antithesis of sustainability. And that's why we don't have, you know, we'll drop, you know, time-based collections, whether that be prints or designs, but we don't introduce a new product unless we know there's longevity there, right? We're not doing fall release and then a spring release and a summer release. And, you know, we, we release yeah. products that have, <laughs> have long-term viability and they, they have, they're kind of an evergreen collection that can last because inevitably once that collection's done, then it's like, well, now it's worthless. So that that there, that's where the waste uh, starts to come into flow. So we definitely we definitely try and stay away from uh, seasonal collection releases for that exact reason. Great, great. Anything else that consumers can do as individuals to identify sustainable clothing brands and tell what's greenwashing, what's not? 
We actually are. There's a big race here um, in Charlotte coming up here shortly, and it's you know it's in our backyard, and it's, um, we're actually we're going to the expo and doing everything. We're releasing this new campaign, and it's directed at the consumer. So this is a perfect kind of answer to your question. It's called it's it's pretty simple, but it's called take the pledge, right? Literally just taking the pledge to be a more conscious consumer. We actually it's kind of cool. We have these little little recover they're like stickers that are in the shape of a T-shirt. It's got recover logo on the front. And on the back, there's a simple QR code and you scan the QR code and you can sign up to take this pledge. You can do email or SMS, whatever you want to do. And again, the idea is we want to help you be a more conscious consumer. So what we'll do is we're going to feed you all kinds of information, right? Those greenwashing articles, what to look out for to make sure that I, I'm not just looking at a label and assuming it's sustainably made. I, I, here's a couple key things that you can look for to ensure we're also going to have some ongoing um, educational content to keep you informed, right? We, we, you know, we want to be a resource uh, for the consumer to help consumer understand what they can continue to do on an ongoing basis. And then also there's a free gift involved as well. So with your first purchase, you get a free closed loop mailer. And what that is, is that ties into our 360 closed loop program where talked about it before, especially for the running audience that we're, uh, that we're chatting with now is I got the drawer of old, old race t-shirts that I don't, I don't know what to do with that free closed loop mailer. You can fill that with Mm -hmm. old shirts, send it back to us. We will literally break those down, recycle them back into new products. So just really kind of starting you on your, you know, your sustainability path, right? Obviously it takes each individual person, but we want to be a resource and an enabler (laughs) for more sustainable approaches. So that take the pledge is a super simple way that, you know, the listener can say, cool, I want to kind of get involved on my own, right? Just on the on the individual basis. So I'll make sure we'll we'll get the the link over to that to you as well. We'll put in the show notes or something like that. But there's a that is a super simple way just to get involved. Perfect. Perfect. All right. As we wrap up at the beginning of the episode, you were hinting at some exciting developments coming down the pipeline as you approach your 15th anniversary. Can you give us a little sneak peek at anything here? Well, so yeah, we're, we've got a couple new products coming out and one that's actually going to drop here in the next couple of weeks. We we did tease it at the um, Marine Corps Marathon last year and it was a huge success, but it's this, um, it's called the impact jacket. So for the running industry that loves it, right? It's kind of like your, what you'd see at a finisher jacket for big marathons, all that stuff. It's a, it's a, you know, a soft shell um, it's got an integrated hoodie with, a st- you know, a, um, a stowaway clasp. It's got the, the chest uh, clasps up front if you need a different a ventilation, dual side pockets. But we love that product because it really highlights both of our supply chains. So, again, our hyperlocal supply chains are here domestically as well as in Central America. So the fabric is, is knit and uh, produced here all in North Carolina. And then the specialty cut and sew is all done in our facility in El Salvador. So we love the fact that this, you know, it's a really premium product, really nice. Uh, we actually got some photos back from the uh, the photo shoot we did out in uh, Aspen earlier this week, and they just look incredible. But it's um, a really, really great piece that, you know, anybody can just buy on the on the website, as well as our, our wholesale customers can purchase and decorate. Um, embroidery on the chest, you know, heat presses all over. So we love that story that it really kind of connects our U.S. supply chain and Central America supply chain. So we'll, we're about to launch that. That'll kind of be a little bit of the kickoff. Uh, we'll launch it this year, but that's kind of a kickoff to our 15 year celebration. But we'll be active throughout. I don't want to give up too much information quite yet, but maybe the uh, maybe the folks that that uh, take the pledge, maybe they'll get first uh, first dibs on on some 15 year celebration. So there's another reason to to jump online and grab grab the take the pledge uh, opportunity to get it, get in the know. Maybe we'll call that the Cool Kids Club, and uh, and see who all we we can get to join the Cool Kids Club. I've never been in one of those before, so I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, me either. Me either. Oh, that's great. Well, Adam, really appreciate you coming on the show, teaching us more about Recover Brands, and people can look for Recover Brand shirts at. John's Bluegrass Racing Company races, and uh, we'll bring the box out there too so people can drop off old shirts and turn them into new ones. Absolutely. That's right. 360 degree closed loop. Thanks again to Adam for coming on the show and telling us more about Recover Brands. It's a great company. We are so happy to be working with them and bringing their products into our races. If you've run the Reforge 5K or the Beer, Bourbon, and Wine series this year, You know how comfortable their shirts are. Your next chance to get a Recover Brand shirt 
from a John's Bluegrass Racing Company race is at the Wessex Farm Trail 10K. Find details on that at the events page of johnsrunwalkshop.com. I'm Matt Reno, and thanks as always for listening. Please help others find the show. Give it a like, rating, review, share it with someone else you think might enjoy it. And we'll talk again soon in Kentucky Running.